welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. 21 year old AC Green is beating all odds. He was born with a spinal condition, which leaves him being unable to walk. He has represented Jamaica as the first para archer, and recently he won a bronze medal in the beginner senior men 30 meter recurve category although he has been in the sport for only a few months. He shares how he o- overcame the obstacles and managed to find success despite having a disability. My guest is A.C. Green. Welcome to Mind Over Matter, A.C. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to talking to you, it's man. It's a pleasure of being here. And looking first... forward to talking to you as well. Yes, and first, um, congratulations, um, you recently returned you. from your first international competition yes. Uh, yes. where you won bronze. So that's an amazing accomplishment. So how does it feel to be Jamaica's first para-archer? It feels amazing. It, it, it feels like I am creating a path for other para-athletes who want to try archery or who wants to get into another sport, archery might be that kind of sport for them. So overall, it just feels, the feeling is overwhelming. But archery though, um, AC, you know, when I think about archery, I, I think in about Robin Hood and back in the Middle Ages, I didn't know that we still <laughs> yeah, that we yeah, had an archery team. So yeah, tell me that, that about that sport. <laughs> Yeah, that is one of the um movies, like when I was younger, mm-hmm. one of the movies that came out called Arrow, uh, I saw it then and I was immediately drawn to it and I was all for it, but not knowing that it was a sport out here or mm-hmm. even just something it could take up as a hobby. Mm-hmm. It was something like that out here, yeah, and I got um introduced to it through my sister. She uh tried it a couple years ago and then for the pandemic hit and then that's when I was looking for something new to do, something different to take up. But uh then she had suggested you should try archery. And I was like, wait, what they do that out here, really? <laughs> yes. Um, so the I think the same weekend it was, uh, she took me to my first archery class. And I did it. I really liked it. At first, leading up to it, I was nervous. I was like, what if I can't pull back the bow? Mm -hmm. What if it's too, what if I'm not (laughs) strong enough? All these different things going around in my head. And um, the very first uh, training session that I had, Mm -hmm. I did pretty decent. Pretty decent at 10 meters. um, Or I think it was 8 meters at the time. And then they eventually told me hey you should keep coming back for this because I really like it and I completely agreed on the same day I was like yeah I'll be back <laughs> don't worry mm. I'll, I'll be back next week yes. yeah and then I went home I think I went home that same Saturday and then I realized there was a big bruise on my arm um from the string hitting me and then I saw that and I was like yeah this is something I kind of want to take up now it's a weird that, that that's a weird <laughs> moment to realize is that this is a sport that you kind of want to continue in but yeah that that was that moment for me for mm-hmm. sure so you you kept going back yeah yeah almost every single week since mm-hmm. so how long ago has it been though <laughs> um, some weeks I missed and then i realized into it that this is not something that I just want to do mm-hmm. an hour once a week because I was only able to go on a Saturday. So mm-hmm. this is I didn't want to just do it once a week just for an hour. Now I was way too addicted to it. <laughs> so I started going Sundays as well. And Sundays I could only get an hour. Um, and then I started going much more frequently. I started paying for um two hours in one day. And then once that... uh. Uh, that's when I kind of knew in myself that, yeah, this is something that I really, really like. And then we had our international, well, national competition out here mm. um, in June. Yeah, June, um, early June. 
uh, that they were shooting at 18 meters at, and I was only at 18 meters just for a couple of weeks. And then everybody on my coaches were telling me, hey, just come try it out for fun. I was kind of skeptical <laughs> because I don't know how I'll do. My anxiety would kick in. Everything <laughs> was going south in my head. Yeah, so, uh, but I went, I told my coaches that, well, my now coaches, I told them then that, uh, well, it depends on how early I wake up that Saturday morning. I'll see. I'll see if I'll show up for the competition or not. And I did show up yeah. with the mindset of just going to have fun. And I performed really well. Like, amazing. Much better than I personally thought I would have. Mm. Um, and uh, I came third initially. And uh, I lost that third place shoot off to another archer who has also been there for a little while, a little bit longer than I have. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a really good battle. I think I lost by just two, three points, three points, I believe. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, I'm just like, <laughs> competition thing, uh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Like, leading up to it, I would say that I... Uh, don't want to do it, but deep down, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm all for it. A hundred and ten percent all for it. All for yeah. it. With the international match as well that um just happened recently. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really sure if I could do it in training. I had my doubts. Funny enough, no, archery is a very humbling sport. <laughs> you have one really, really good day shooting and then the very next day you go back. Nothing works in terms of your shot process is off. You're just not focused. It could be something happening at work because we're training in the afternoon. Um so we have the day for you know work and then in the afternoon we come to training. Uh yeah it's just really humbling because you think you can hit all tens and all nines mm. just bullseye after bullseye and uh, it's <laughs> yeah you go there that day thinking that that's what you'll be able to do consecutively mm -hmm. and it not turning out like that at all and then you're just like yeah this is quite humbling right so, so you have to be uh, mentally strong then oh yes for sure for sure for sure not just in archery in any sport mm. the mental the mental strength and your mental stability is plays a massive part in it especially in competitions bigger competitions because mm. you have other teams trying to psych you out in the simplest of ways they'll probably come up to you and just start talking to you and then the questions that they'd ask about like oh your shot process what do you do do you breathe when you're when you're about to release the arrow, what do you do? And that gets you thinking um, a lot. So there's a lot of it on both sides of the fence of where you would have to know what know what to take in and what to just let it pass through one ear and go through the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so what, a, lot, a lot of it is a mental game. Mm -hmm, sure. mm -hmm. So what was it like, though, representing Jamaica? You know, what was that experience like? Yeah. <laughs> nerves, nerves, <laughs> nerves, nerves, proper nerves leading <laughs> all the way up to it. Because I don't think I had realized the magnitude of mm -hmm. what I was doing, being the first para archer out here and just going with a team that has never had that has never experienced any international matches prior to the one in Domrep. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of firsts for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we went to that competition and they did remember us for sure. <laughs> they, they mark, yeah, the whole entire team left the mark. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then what is so remarkable is you're also playing against able-bodied persons. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I am. Um, in training, I was kind of iffy about it. Um, but it's not something that I could beat around. It's not something that I could go there and say, "All right, everybody, sit in a chair and let's shoot <laughs> together with you know with me or anything like that." No, it was always um shooting against them and just that natural drive and desire inside mm -hmm. of me 
mm. that wants me to push and go above and beyond. Mm. And uh, I do that a lot in training as well. Sometimes, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad because in strength and conditioning mm. training, I would push myself a little bit too hard, not knowing that because I'm in the wheelchair, well, knowing that I'm in the wheelchair, but mm -hmm. ignoring the fact that I'm in the wheelchair uh, and pushing myself a little bit too much with the workouts mm -hmm. that they do because I'm constantly using my arms. Um, so I can't do as much pull-ups right. as they can do. I can't do as much sit-ups as they can do. Mm -hmm. I get winded really easily and I'm working on that cardio and um, my stamina to build it up for sure. Mm -hmm. So tell me now, so how is the competition leveled to, to prevent um, able-bodied persons having an advantage? I mean, like it is different in elevation when you're shooting sitting down mm -hmm. from when you're standing up. So it might be a sight adjustment, just mm -hmm. bringing down your sight a little clicks or bringing it up a little clicks, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but once you are working with your equipment and you know how to tune your equipment based off of your particular situation, mm -hmm. then the laying the playing field is mm -hmm. as the leveled as the experience that everybody okay. has. Okay, okay. Yeah. So for my viewers who don't know anything about archery, tell us a little about it. You know, what's the whole objective? Tell us, um, give us some <laughs> the whole objective is to hit the bullseye as many times as possible, no matter the distance. You will start mm -hmm. out at, well, I know for Jamaica Rifle Association is where we go train and we do offer classes there um, on weekends. So okay. like from Saturdays and Sundays, from 10 to 11 and from 11 to 12. Mm -hmm. uh, on both Saturdays and Sundays, they can get beginner classes. So they, initially the aim is to, to put the arrow in the bow and then you pull it back as far as you can and then you release. Mm -hmm. um, and I know in the beginner's classes, we what I did for sure, was I got a chance to shoot at the 3D targets that they have. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, they had a little competition with that saying that, okay, cool. The head is a certain amount of points. The eyes are a certain amount of points. The rest of the body mm -hmm. is a certain amount of points and stuff okay. like that. But uh, other than that, you know, there is a whole bunch of different Mm -hmm. disciplines and categories in archery itself so there's a difference you have recurve bows and you have bare bows mm -hmm. um and then you have the olympic style recurve bow which just adds stabilizers on the bow a certain different kind of side up um all of the above would accumulate to being an olympic style recurve bow uh, so you, everybody at the range would start out as a bare bow archer, which means that you don't get a sight. It's pretty much just the bows itself and then the string, and you put the the the, the you pull back the bow as far as you can to the corner of your mouth right here, mm -hmm. and you look down the shaft of the arrow, and then that's what you use as your aiming point, and then you release mm -hmm. using that. That at a greater distance, that bare bow at a greater distance is based off of pure skill. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit more so than Olympic style recurve because you have an advantage of the side. I'm not saying that it is that much easier, but you do have that bit of advantage with using a sight. And I use um, a sight because I want to take this, the, um, the sport that I'm doing. I really and truly want it to mm -hmm. take you up to the Olympic level and represent as many people as possible mm -hmm. and make everybody all proud. Do you have any problems um, because you're in a wheelchair handling the bow? All right, so sometimes I start, I struggle with stability in the wheelchair mm -hmm. itself. Um, based off of the terrain, uh, it all depends on if it is rocky, if it is smooth, if I'm shooting in grass, if there's a dirt pile or a ditch like a slight um, gradient going down, mm -hmm. it can throw my shots off. But for stability for myself to be in the wheelchair also matters. So I shoot with a strap around my chest mm -hmm. just in case of anything because 
uh, I'll be pulling back 30 pounds. I'll be pulling back um, a little bit over 30 mm -hmm. in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So uh, the stability definitely matters for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's a little bit different because with shooting in the chair, I'll, I'll lean forward and then that's where the strap comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, so it catches me from not leaning too far forward and falling out of the mm -hmm. chair. Uh, and then I would lift up the bow and then I would lean back as far as I could and then pull back the bow and then I would release the bow. But um, sometimes I would still be leaning too far forward than is recommended um so sometimes my shots are a little off because of that but i'm learning now for sure how to shoot with um shooting with on a leveled shooting line and shooting with on somewhere that is a little bit grassy mm -hmm. it's not leveled properly so there's humps and bumps all over the places and stuff like that but i can tell you from experience shooting with <laughs> those kind of conditions and then going on international matches where mm -hmm. It is paved and it is uh everything is done properly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big difference. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to be it, it, okay. It, so where does this drive or, or our motivation comes from? Um, AC. <laughs> I believe mm -hmm. from I was very little mm -hmm. from almost baby stages coming up mm -hmm. now of that that's what i believe because with anything that i've always done i always wanted to keep up with the others and i think that is why i push myself so hard mentally and physically as much as possible in training with everybody else uh because i always want to keep up with them and um sometimes do better than them and mm -hmm. i get a little bit hard on myself because of that uh so okay so so tell me a little about your childhood yeah yeah i grew up in uh linstead yurton area mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah community called white house um grew up with my sisters and my mom mm -hmm. uh, and just growing up with them they never made me feel like it was that big of an issue. The disability, being in the chair, mm -hmm. was that big of an issue at all. They made me feel like, okay, cool, you can't walk, but there's still a whole yeah. bunch of doors and opportunities mm -hmm. out there for you. So you need to push against it. And that, that, that attitude growing up and that hearing that on a daily basis from each and every one of them um, has really helped me socially. I mean... Granted, I still had my social, have my social anxiety mm -hmm. uh, about going out and about just sometimes talking to people as mm -hmm. well because I do suffer from depression, um, different levels of it as well. But uh, yeah, I've always found myself in sometimes in that dark place when I was younger as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but always fought through it, no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the friends I was around growing up, mm -hmm. they never, at least in my memory, they never made me feel like I was mm -hmm. less yes. than. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if they were going anywhere, they were like, "All right, cool. We can find a way to get AC mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. We're not leaving him out of it uh, for no reason." Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that has helped uh, okay. quite a bit. Quite so a what, bit um, what about school? Um, oh, did you do well in school? Mm -hmm. How did that? Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, up to well, no. <laughs> yeah, man, I did. I did. I did. Up to <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. academics wasn't my 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 my, my favorite. Mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't, but uh, what really helped though through high school was music. Mm -hmm. Um, the school I went to, Liberty Academy, they have a really nice music program. Okay, that helps you to be confident in front of a crowd because mm -hmm. we had performances um and shows like that that people came out to and watch so you would mm -hmm. learn how to go in front of or on a stage in front of people um and just you need to perform at your 
best. Mm -hmm. But do you, th okay, do you think though, AC, that your background in music has helped you in this sport? Because, you know, oh, it's yes. the same practice, practice and the discipline. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. The practice and uh, the discipline and just being able to perform with a crowd staring at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not so much in the qualifying rounds when everybody, you have like a hundred and something people on the shooting line. Um, you have a hundred and something different archers on the shooting line shooting at the same time. You don't really have to worry about like that many eyes being on you, it's still, they're still there. Just in your mind, you're like, all right, cool. They're not just focused on me. But once you, once you get down to the shoot-off categories and the head-to-head -head categories when it's just two people on the shooting line shooting at the same targets and you're one of those people, there are eyes on you, right? <laughs> so um, music for sure has definitely helped me to keep calm cool and as collected as as as, as possible mm. as much as possible um to you know bring home a bronze medal the mm. the, the competition was really close mm. really fierce between the top three mm. um but yeah it so, so what, what do you think then um are the most important skills in archery Hand-eye coordination, <laughs> um, <laughs> being able to keep calm mm. and uh, not let the Focus. pressure mm. get to you. Mm. Yeah, mm. for sure. And the consistency is a big thing in archery um, because say, for instance, you're shooting arrows and they're going all, all over the place. Mm. It is a little bit hard to adjust and know what is going wrong when the arrows are all over the place but if you're shooting in one particular spot it may not be the bullseye area but you're shooting off to the left or off to the right mm -hmm. whatever it may be um then it is easier to say okay cool if if all of your groupings are landing in x let's shift it over to y mm -hmm. um yeah so it's, it's much easier that way for sure mm -hmm. All right, so we usually have a, a strong representation in the Paralympics. Um, mm -hmm. Is that one of your your goal? Oh, yeah. To go to the... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, for sure. For sure, for sure. It is. It is a big goal and a big dream of mine. And as, as I said prior to this, that my main goal is just to get out there and prove to as many people as possible both mm. disabled or non-disabled mm -hmm. able-bodied folks mm -hmm. that doesn't matter what it is could be academics could be just your day-to-day -day life could be going to work it could be sports whatever um you need to excel in it is possible with the hard work and determination mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. because i can tell you it wasn't easy like yeah. mentally as i said mentally it's the mental part of it plays a massive role in it. And if you're not there on mentally on the day of shooting or on the day of competition, it can affect you. Mm -hmm. And little things can throw you off. But with with a lot of training and a lot of experience in mm -hmm. those situations, you learn how to turn certain things off, certain emotions off. You learn how to turn the crowd off you know how to just focus on it's just you your equipment and the target downrange that you're aiming at mm -hmm. so how um did you um overcome some of the challenges that you faced as someone with a disability sometimes i i i still struggle with mm -hmm. it i'm not gonna lie yeah especially going out certain places because out here is not really set up for people in a wheelchair so I, I always have to do certain research on wherever I'm going to see if there is parking access for mm. disabled people if there are ramps if there's if the place is upstairs I have to check for an elevator and stuff so as I say a lot of it is a lot of me overcoming it mm. is stemming both from music from archery now it is putting mm. myself out there into yeah 
the light of a lot of people that are looking on me out of curiosity at first to saying that way yes. this guy is doing stuff and you know mm -hmm. what, what he's doing is really cool yeah. um so for sure mm -hmm. music family and archery mm -hmm. has helped me through a lot so ac there are many young people um who are struggling socially because of their um, disability what advice do you have to leave for them get out there as much as possible and i know it's going to be hard both in comfort level but jamaica is i know for sure that they're putting a lot of things in place it's like steps to go into i mean where you'd have steps um to go into stores they're now replacing and some are adding um ramps mm -hmm. to go into the store and making sure the doorway is a little bit wider to fit a chair or fit anything else you need to fit in there. Um, so advice that I do have for you, if you're getting bored of your four walls, by all means, go out there and try something new. It may be photography, it may be um, sports, academics, mm -hmm. anything that you know that you have a passion in. You, you don't even have to tell anybody about it. Your parents don't necessarily have to know that passion deep down inside you that you want to explore. But if you love it enough and if you have a drive and desire to go for it, by all means, go for it. And I know it's not going to be easy at first. Like me personally, it wasn't easy at first. I had to do counseling mm -hmm. um, because I was struggling with quite a lot mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the counseling that I received and with a lot of the support that I got from my family and friends around me, um, I overcome a lot of it. Like go up a year ago, I would not have been mm. in this place mentally. So with the right health, with the right people around you and just with that natural drive mm. um, and desire to prove the odds. And I know for sure that being disabled you do have that drive and you do have your moments of doubt as well but deep down you have that drive to prove otherwise that yo yeah i can keep up with you whether it be um in a wide wide range of anything at all mm -hmm. dig down deep find that drive and excel in whatever you want okay so um before i leave though do you want to thank anybody who has you know helped you along this journey Yes, families. Mm. Jesus, my family has been there throughout um, quite a bit for me. Uh, even days when I felt like I didn't want to go to training that day, they're like, all right, cool, I don't care what you say, we're getting in the <laughs> car and we're going to training. Yeah. And uh, some days I'd have my off days, as I said before, mm. the, sorry, the archery is a humbling sport. You would... I've broken numerous arrows, either missing the target and hitting a wall <laughs> behind the target. Uh, the arrow just snap into two. I've had wind blow over, um, blow the target down on the floor. And then the arrows that are shot, those snapped into two. <laughs> I've had a whole bunch of stuff um, happen to me. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it just, if you don't have a part of around you mm -hmm. for that motivation or um, to aid in that motivation, dig down deep and find it. Trust me, it, it, it is worth it. It's not going to be easy, but the outcome is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say thank you, though, um, AC, for being here. And, well. uh, thank you for being so inspiring, too. And I want to wish you all the best. Be sure I'm going to see you on the, the podium accepting your yeah. medals. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. I'll, be, I'll be out there going to as many competitions as possible. Yes. So, so all the best. Yeah, man. Thank you as well. And I appreciate oh. it. And it's an honor to be on here. Okay.